This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchem Abam, welcome everyone. We have a very important topic tonight, Parshas Truma. Of course, the Shiurim on Sefer Shemais are sponsored by our dear friends, the Zakheim Mishpacha, by Dr. Zakheim, who Mishpach, the Lilo Nishmas of Shema, Eliezer ben Rabbi Yaakov Zakheim, and Lilo Nishmas, Dr. Zakheim's mother, Rivka Bas Tuvia Halevi. Now, um, the Shiurim of Chodesh Adar are being sponsored by the Israeli family of Great Neck, Lilo Nishmas, their father, who is Nifter this week, Yehoshua ben Yecheskel, began Eden Tehman Uchasai, and he should be a male Tzioshe for the whole family. Ad Biyaskel Tzedek. Tonight's shir is sponsored by my good friend of Ranana, Paul Friedman. Le'iloi Nishmas, his father's first yard site on Dalet Adar, Yosef Avraham ben Yeshaya. When I was in Eretz Yisrael, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Friedman contacted us about um, giving a share of Eli Nishmasai. So the, on this occasion, the week of his father's yard said, Nishmasai should have an aliyah, began Eden, and be a male social of his whole family, Ad Biyasko El Tzedek. Okay, now, another thing is, um, if, in case you don't have this Sefer on Purim, you should, it's highly recommended by the experts. First of all, even if you got it last year, you probably don't remember where you put it. Or you might have given it to your brother-in-law. Now your brother-in-law definitely doesn't remember where he put it. And he didn't even look at it yet. So you could actually get it and give it to him again. And he won't even remember. And that's not only the English Sefer. This is the Adar edition of the uh, <laughs> promo for this farm. Also the Sefer in Lashon HaKodesh is available. Okay, Parshas Chuma. The Pasuk says, V'yikhu li truma. You should take from me truma me'es kol ish. From every man, asher yidvenu libai. Whose heart compels him, tikhu ish trumasi. So today we're going to speak about a very important topic. Not only raising children, but more importantly, raising yourself. We know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave Kal Yisrael a Torah. And He gave us 613 mitzvahs. And we have to observe all of them. We can't really say, well, these work out for me, and those I'm not so into. But the Torah is one entity, so we have to be Mechabel and be Shomer, all 613 mitzvahs. Nevertheless, we do find in the Gemara that certain Amoraim emphasized and focused on particular mitzvahs. So for example, the Gemara says in Shabbos on Kufi Yerches Beis, Rabbi Yossi says that I was always makbid that my clothing be worn properly, neatly, presentably. Also, Rav Nachman said, I should be rewarded that I was Mekayim, the three Sudos on Shabbos. Now, who isn't Mekayim, the three Sudos? means he was very Makbed on it, even in extenuating circumstances. No matter what the occasion, he was always Makbed on three Sudos on Shabbos. Rav Yehuda says, I should be rewarded that I was, uh, I davened with great intensity and great analysis. Rav Huna Brave Rabbi Yeshua said, I never walked for Amos with my head uncovered. Rav Shesha says, I was always Mekayim Mitfilin. Rav Nachman says, I was always Mekayim Tzitzis. Rav Yosef said to Rav Yosef, the son of Rabba, he said, Rav Yosef, your father Rabba, what was he most careful in? Oh, he was most careful in Tzitzis. What do you mean he's most careful in Tzitzis? You've got to keep all the mitzvahs. What do you mean he's most careful in Tzitzis? So from here, we learn that even though you have to be careful in every mitzvah, there still is room that a person is allowed to put his heart into certain areas more than other areas. So what exactly is this idea? So the question is, if a person has discretion to say, you know, ah, this is my mitzvah, or this is my specialty, how is this a person supposed to know where to put emphasis? In other words, a uh, I don't know, should I, should I be more medactic in tzitzis or more medactic in tefillin? Or should I, should I say Kriya Shema with more Avas Hashem or should I be more into Sukkah? Or should I learn more B'iyun or should I learn more B'kiyas? A person is given allowance of, certain, of personal expression. You know, you don't have to be cookie cut. Not everybody has to be exactly the same. So how is a person supposed to know how to 
put emphasis, focus, emotion. So we have a medrash in the Yalkut Shemani. The medrash says that Chia, the son of the sister of Elazar Hakapar, he had a very beautiful voice. So Chia Uh, so Rabbi Lezer would say, Chia, my son, go daven for the Amud. Kabed es Hashem mehoincha. Honor Hashem from your wealth, from your talent. Which means like this, that if a person has a particular ability, that's a signal that it's worthwhile to express yourself in that area. And the Medrash tells a story, there was a man by the name of Navais. He had a very beautiful voice. And he used to go up to be Oile Regal, and he would be the Chazan in the great synagogue when, uh, when, during Ali Ola Regal. One time, he didn't go up. Then, how many times do I have to go up? They don't pay me enough. It's not worth it. It's too much of a schlep. One time, he didn't go up. And they, they ratted on him. Somebody made up a story about him. And he was destroyed. Why was he destroyed? Why was he punished? Because he didn't go up to honor Hashem from his talent. Chazal say that if you're Oile Regal, no one will desire your land. That means if you're not Oile Regal, people are going to covet your land. That's what happened to Navois. Uh, Yeruvam wanted his vineyard and uh, somebody ratted on him and ultimately Navois was killed. So we see, there's a certain idea that if you have a talent, if you have a good voice, you have a certain ability, you have a knack for something, you have a a capability in a certain area, you should utilize that and use that as a directional signal of how to guide yourself in life. It's interesting, actually a, um, a good chunk of today's share comes from the Sefer, Likute Mamarim Shvile Pinchas, a Rapinchas Friedman. Now I saw this many years ago. This is a Maimar from, I'm going to tell you in a second, it's a Maimar from Tavshin Samachtes. It's a Maimar from, uh, you know, 14 years ago. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but uh, we tied it in in a certain way this evening. He's Medayik, if you look at number three in Sefer Malachim, what happened to Navais? Two guys. Two lawless guys got up. They testified about Navais that he cursed the king and he cursed God and they stoned him to death. So the Srila Pincha says, Why was his punishment for not being Oile Regal that he was accused of cursing Hashem? From here we see that if somebody has the ability to use their voice to sing to Hashem, to praise Hashem, if you don't use it, if you don't use it, then it's as if. Hashem created, gave you the ability to bless Him. So if you're not blessing Him, it's like you cursed Him. So if you have a talent, let's say you can play the keyboard, or let's say you have whatever ability you have, whatever knack you have. No, I don't like to do it. I don't like to do it in public. I don't like... People have sometimes uh, excuses that might not be fully legitimate. That if a person has an ability, one should use that as a directional signal of where to place their emphasis on. So with this we come to the, really the epic words of the Vilna Gaon. I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but it's Kedai to see a little bit of it inside. Uh, this shear is about child rearing, but also about, in general, how, to, how a person should guide themselves in this world, how to serve Hashem. The Pasuk says, Chanoich lanar al pidarkai. Train the youth according to his way. Gam ki yazkin. Even when he grows old, la yasur mimena. He will not depart from it. So here Shlomo Melech apparently is a little bit concerned that you could train a kid so long as he's in your house and the moment he leaves your house, he's off to the races. So it's important to make sure that whatever chinuch you give him is something that will be sustained even when you're, you know, you're not hovering over him. And that derech is, you need to do chinuch al pi dar koi, based on your son's path. What does that mean? Says the Vilna Goin, it is impossible to break your derech. Meaning the mazel that you are born on. Like the Gemara says, if you were born in the mazel of tzedek, 
then you will be just. <laughs> you just won't be able to be crooked. Or, if you were born in Mazel Madim, if you were born when Mars was uh, prevalent, when Mars was dominant, so the Gemara says you have three choices. Either you'll be a murderer, or you'll be a butcher, or you'll be a mile. But you're not going to sell used cars, and you're not going to own nursing homes. Those are not the options. You have three things you could be. You could either use your ability uh, letoiv, and you could be a mile, or you could be in between, you could be a butcher, or you could be a murderer. But you're not going to all of a sudden become a... Uh, you know, you're not going to start you're gonna, uh, ride racehorses, or you're not all of a sudden going to uh, go into accounting. Those are not going to be good options for this guy. So basically, every person is born with a certain nature. Every person is born with a certain tendency or inclination. And you ain't going to change that. There's not changing. You're not going to say, okay, let me work on myself and... Some people are going to be calm people. They're not all of a sudden going to become all fiery. You could do whatever you want. You could knock them over the head. You could say, kid, why aren't you davening with enthusiasm? Why aren't you conversing with the enthusiasm? The kid is calm, he's not changing. Or you can have some people, they're just very passionate, very aggressive. So, so what the, the father is going to say, take him, bring him into shul. He's going to put one seat belt around his feet, one seat belt around his arm, Put a muzzle, say, kid, stay where you are. Well, he'll stay where he is for 17 years, and as soon as he's out of sight, he's going to be running uh, out of control. So basically, people are born with certain inborn tendencies, which means really that Bechira is somewhat mitigated and, and limited. Basically, you have free choice within your nature. Now, within your nature, the job is to harness, channel the nature in a way where you use your ability and tendency, letoiv. So you, this guy is going to shed blood. So either you could become a murderer or you could become a mayal. But you have to channel it in the right direction. So, chanoi lanar. Train the youth, al pi dar koi, based on his path, based on his nature, based on his tendencies. Then, gam ki even when he grows old, lo yasur mimena. He's not going to turn away from it. You know, it's like saying, um, you can't ba- you basically you can't change a person's inborn nature. And uh, the Rashiva of Tells, Rav Aaron David Goldberg, in his Kuntra San Chinuch, he says that this perhaps is the explanation in when Moshe Rabbeinu davened that the next leader of Klal Yisrael should be Yifkoid Hashem Eloike Haruchais Lechal Basar. God should appoint the God of all spirits, of all tendencies, should appoint for all flesh Ishal Ho'eda, a man over the community. And Rashi explains, you know Hashem, that everybody has their own personality and their own tendencies. Place upon them, appoint a manhig who could tolerate everyone. In other words, what Moshe Rabbeinu was mispalo for is that Moshe Rabbeinu recognized everybody has a different nature. You can't change people's nature. And therefore, Hashem, make sure you have a leader who can identify the nature of every member of the Jewish people and guide them in that path. Okay, so which means that the first thing that a parent has to do is they have to be able to identify what is the nature of my kid. Because you don't know what the nature of your kid is and you just you go to a parenting class. Okay, if the kid misbehaves, count to ten. Then, put a paper bag over their head. Then, put them in a playpen. You know, you can't follow an absolute protocol. The first step in uh, being mechanech children is you need to know clearly what is the nature of my child? What are the tendencies of my child? What are the inclinations of my child? Wh- what is he interested in? What are his talents? What are her abilities? If you can't identify it, you are exempt from the mitzvah of chinuch. Go make a living, bring home money, and have your wife bring up the kid. But if you, or vice versa, but if you don't know who your kid is, you can't even begin being mechanech them. How are you supposed to be mechanech somebody that, in other words, chinuch is harnessing, channeling, not, not saying X, Y, and Z. 
In the Sefer Choyves HaTalmidim of Rev Talmud Kleinimus Shapiro, the, the Eish Kodesh, he brings a few examples. He says, if you have a kid who's stubborn like a mule, and the Rebbe or the parent is, you know, having a very hard time. So you could look at the kid right now as a stubborn kid, or you could say, you know, the kid has the midah of stubbornness. Imagine if I channel that midah that he should be stubborn about his Yiddishkeit, about his observance, about his addictive mitzvahs. Then the day will come, no wind in the world will sway him. He will be medaktik in halacha, no come what may. In other words, don't view it as a negative character trait. View it as a trait that you're going to channel their stubbornness to be stubborn about the right things. Or let's say you see a kid, he has a temper. You see people like that. Sometimes a kid... By the way, you have to start picking up on a kid's tendency from when they're two days old, they already have a nature. You know, I have some kids, they're born, they come out, they're calm. You know, then they open their eye, they give a little whimper, a little cry, you give them a bottle, just you hold them, you're at ease. And some kid, they come out screaming, crying, colicky. They're never... It's right away. You could tell. Right, you could almost tell right away. So if you have somebody, a child who's very angry, there. Yes, anger is a bad mida, but that doesn't mean it's a bad child because kas could be channeled uh, for the good. How is that possible? Uh, he brings from the Sifrei Kabbalah that somebody who is angry could be extremely. Fiery about tefillah, fiery about asiyas hamitzvahs, fiery about limud atayra. So, in other words, you channel the mida of kas to mitzvahs and masim toivim. But don't assume, don't automatically assume. Okay, this is a bad trait. This is a bad characteristic. This is an evil tendency. No, channel, harness their inborn and innate midas and personality traits. For, uh, for the good. So again, if, so, if a kid has kas b'teva, so he could utilize it and channel it lehislahev berishbe eish hatashuka to fire himself in the fiery, uh, passionate service of Hashem. So now we're learning a very important thing. That chinuch is really like training. You're training them to use their ability. They have certain ability, you're training them to use that. But if you're sort of coercing them to do something that's not within their ability, so you're not training them, you're just basically tying them up and putting them in a cage, and you're treating them like an animal. And that's not chinuch. That will not stick with them, kasha yazkin. Which really means that it's a parent's responsibility to be able to identify exactly what the nature of the kid is, and send them to a yeshiva that caters to their personality. Just because you went to a certain yeshiva growing up, or you're affiliated with a certain approach, and you're going to impose that on the child, so it could be criminal, because that approach may have worked for you, but that does, that's not chinuch for your child. Your child is a different entity. Your child has a, a different set of DNA. says Rav Volba in the Alei Shur that the same way you cannot train a child to do things that are against his nature and you can't train a child to do things that are not within his personality because again, what you're doing is you're, you're, you, you have to develop their inborn ability and channel their inclinations. It is very important not to expect of a child something that they can't understand yet and is beyond their level. Because then also you're not training them. The definition of chinuch is to use their inborn capability. So if they're too young for what you're trying to explain to them, or they can't appreciate what you're trying to 
what you're trying to tell them, it's also not within their ability, so you're not harnessing anything. You're not channeling anything. It's beyond their ability. Some examples that uh, Rav Volba gives in his Sefer Zriya Binyan Bechinuch is often mothers say, Oh, my child is so clean. I've trained my kid from two years old that he showers every day and he takes a bath every day and after he eats he cleans his hands and I trained him to be so hygienic. And now all the expert in child rearing, the secular experts say, the best way to destroy a little child is to insist that he's always clean. It is the single worst thing you could do to a child. This is not from Revoba. This is secular parenting experts that parents that are you know, su- super insistent that the child is always immaculately clean, that is the f- um, one-way ticket to abysmal child rearing. Why? Because the child needs expression. One day the child will figure out on his own, if he has a normal father and mother, that he should take a shower every day. But you do not have to teach it to them before they uh, could go, ah, ba, ga, ga, ga. You know, if the kid is dirty and it's not going to be healthy, that's a different situation. That's an example that Reb Volba gives. Again, don't say, I went to a shir and the rabbi said not to bathe the kid. Um, you have to understand what I'm saying. He says that, Mekubal um, Hayoim, if you look at number 12, um, about 15 lines out, he says, well accepted today. Rav Volba says, I endorse this. If you insist that the child be immaculately clean, it stunts his development. The time will come when the kid will take a shower on his own. There is no child in the world that bathes now because his parents made him insane that he has to brush his teeth or clean. You tell them, you know, you tell them, you want to have clean teeth, so it's important to brush teeth twice a day. And floss, yeah, like, like any parent, like any kid is actually going to floss, but that's a different story. I have to do that, it's brought to you by the, by what, I don't know. Don't do so, uh, by uh, Dr. Adler, right? Thank you. I charge for the dental commercials. Okay, so, but... That's the general approach. And Revova emphasizes that the definition of chinuch is for the long term. Many parents think, okay, I want to get my child to do something. Watch, watch this. Go do it now! And he goes and does it. Or, he, or even worse, you could force the child to go do it now. The problem is, says Revoba, when the child becomes a teenager, they are scarred from the experience of their childhood. You may never know it. So just because you could get a child to do something, it doesn't always mean it's worth it to get the child to do something. Chinuch is the long run. The long run means you need to develop a relationship of warmth, and love with the child when he's young, so that when he becomes a teenager, or she becomes a teenager, and they're, they're going through the challenges of life, they will come to you, and they will feel close to you, and they won't want to let you down because of the love you have for them. It's not worth damaging that chamimus, that warmth, for the short term that you could get them to do what you think is important this second. The eye has to be on the long run. But... The general idea is the definition of chinuch is channeling, harnessing the particular need, ability, capability, talents, inclinations of one of a child. And Rav Goldberg quotes an amazing Chassam Seifer. I don't know where in the writings of the Chassam Seifer it is. He doesn't say where in the Chassam Seifer it is. He quotes it from the Sefer Sifsei Eliyahu. But the Gemara in Sukkah says, and Daflam Edvav, let's say you have an Esraig. Azriel, do you have an Esrog orchard in your backyard? Uh, no. No. <clears throat> but if you did, and you had, you know how Esrogum grow, they, they look, you know, like a lemon, a little bumpy. But what if you put around the Esrog as it's growing, uh, like a cast, um, 
Like a perm costume? Uh, no, not like a perm costume. Let's say you put around the esrog, you put a defus, a, a mold, and you shaped it like a heart, or you shaped it like a rectangle, or an octagon. So then the esrog will take the shape of the mold, yeah? The halacha is the esrog is puzzle. It's puzzle. A garto? Yeah. That's possible. A garto? Okay, I'm not going to say it. What? No, a, 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 they shape it. They do? So it should be sitting in the middle, it should look like a garto. I don't know you're allowed to do that. Right. But the Gemara. While, yeah? While the esrog is on the tree. The Gemara says if you make a mold on the esrog, the esrog is puzzle. So the Chasam Sofer says an esrog is a mashal to a Tamil Chacham. <coughs> if the Tamil Chacham says, yeah, I'm going to be like him. He's puzzle. Well, you, no, you be like you. And if you're going to say, I'm going to put a mold around my kid. I want my kid to be A, B, C, and D. Just the way I am. The way that person is. Then you're destroying the kid. The same way if you put an esrog in a mold, in a box. You can put an esrog in a box. You can't put your kid in a box. And you can't put yourself in a box. Nobody develops in a healthy way if they're put in a box. And the same way you can't mold the shape of an esrog, you cannot mold the shape of your child. You have to cultivate the natural shape that your sh- child will take. You have to help him get there. That's the uh, lesson of Godloy Bedfus Vasoi Kmin Beri Acheres Pasal. There's another interesting Gemara. And I hope uh, it's okay if we mention this. If you look at number 13, the Gemara Ksuba Sanaf Nun, Amar of Yitzchak, Be'usha Heskinu, Shei Adam Mezgalgel and Benoi Ad Shtei Mesoi Shana. In Usha, Usha they made the following Takana. Right, in Usha they made a lot of Takanas. One Takana they made is, if you want to give Tzedakah, you're not to give more than a fifth. They also made a Takana that up to 12 years old, roll with your kid. Yankel, you want to learn? No, I don't want to learn. I want to play baseball. Okay, I'll play baseball with you first. And then we'll learn, okay? Yeah, fine. After the baseball, Yanko, you ready to learn? No, now I want ice cream. Okay, I'll get you ice cream. And afterwards you learn? Yeah. Then you get them ice cream. Now I want Lego. Lego, first, first you want baseball, then ice cream. And then, yeah. So up to 12, you roll with the kid. After 12, Yoyred Imoy Lechayov. You go down into his life. Meaning, says Rashi, you hit him. Now, I'm not getting into whether you're allowed to hit a kid or not. Chas Hashem, we're not talking about that subject. But basically, Rashi is saying, you got to force it. Up to 12, you're patient. After 12, you insist. The Marsha has a different definition of this. The Marsha understands the Gemara that teaching a livelihood is called Beis Chayehem, the house of their life. And the Marsha says, up to 12, you try to get your kid to learn. After 12, the kid's not being successful learning. So the kid's not being successful learning, you teach the kid a trade. So let's get the general idea of the Marsha. Marsha is learning that the Takana of Usha is not that in, they were masakin that you deal patiently with a child until 12. And after 12, you're insistent on the learning. The takana of Usha was you have to deal with a child according to his ability. And if his ability is not in learning, it's in working, then at a certain time you need to recognize that and guide them in that path. Which means like this. That the definition of chinuch is recognizing what is my child able to do? What is he happy doing? What will he be successful doing? Right now at this age, uh, the, the, the learning, he's too young for it. Let him play. Let him enjoy himself. At this age, this is the appropriate age to be learning. At a certain time, if one child shows promise in learning and shows interest and shows enthusiasm, you help guide him along that path. If another child is not really taking to it, then you guide him in the path of a trait. Yes, the Marsha is saying that not everyone should be sitting and learning. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I would never say that. Who am I? I'm just telling you what the Marsha says. Okay? So the Marsha says, you have to recognize what the person's capability is. And by the way, before a person could train their children, 
A person has to recognize about themselves. What are my abilities? What are my talents? What are my interests? Before you could even begin to train somebody else, a person has to know themselves. Fortunate is the person who picks a path in life that's conducive to their personal ability. Okay, here's the problem. So far, especially based on the Vilna Gaim, it seems like that when you're teaching your child or you're choosing a path in life, you have to make sure that you're not going against your basic nature because it's impossible to break your basic nature. You know, if you're going to, uh, if you, say, you know, have a spilkus and you can't sit in one place for more than three minutes, then maybe sitting in a coil for 12 hours a day is not the, the occupation for you. If you can't sit for three minutes, then what are you going to do? You're going to spend 11 and a half hours in the coffee room? Maybe... You should find a job that you're going to be on the move. And if you're a calm person and a focused person, then uh, maybe you shouldn't be handling real estate where your phone's going to be buzzing every five and a half seconds. So maybe a different occupation is good for you. The bottom line is, you got to channel your ability and your focus, but you can't break it. Comes Rebbe Elimelech of Lezhensk, and he writes in something called Tzetel Katan. You ever hear of the Tzetel Katan? Tzetel Katan is like... Uh, the Igeras HaMusser of Rebbe Elimelech of Lezhensk, he writes, Ha'adam lo'inivra ba'olam rak l'shaberes ha'teva. Man was created to break his nature. That's what you're here in this world for. You're angry? You get angry about everything? You're here in this world to calm down, to overcome that. Every little thing that somebody does bothers you, you're here in this world to take a deep breath and train yourself to be calm. You don't care about anything. You're just level-headed. It doesn't matter. Somebody could say a joke. Somebody could say something sad. You sit there like a statue. Your job in this world is to work on being emotional. Whatever you are, your job is to break your teva. So for example, let's say, and especially he says you should do that when you're 18 years old. So if you're stubborn, break your nature. 40 days in a row, every single thing you want to do, don't do it. And that will do the trick. Let's say you're lazy. Every day for 40 days, set your alarm clock for 5 a.m. You jump out of bed. You jump into, you run to shul. You do everything with Jesus. You're a bishon. You're embarrassed for 40 days. Hoydi Lashem ki You scream the down on top of your lungs. You're not contradictory. He's, he's, he's just the opposite of what you've been preaching still now. Not really. Well, the the traits that are saying break it, break it back. The Rebelli says the man was created to break their nature. That's just that was, seems like. So on the one hand the Gra was saying that you know you're you're basically stuck in your nature, you're stuck in your teva, and all you could do is channel it for the good. But if you're lazy, you're gonna be lazy. So now channel the laziness to not doing Averos or something like that. Or if you're an angry person, you're just going to be angry, but use your passion for tefillah, for Torah. And Rabbi Melchel Vajan says the purpose of life is to go against your nature and to break your bad character. So you know what you would say? Huh. It's not a contradiction. There's the Gra and Rabbi Melchel Vajansk. The Gra, the Gra is you go with your tendencies. The Gra, the father of the Bnei Taira, Bnei Yeshiva, you go with your nature. The Hasidim, fight your nature. I'm not sure how, if you would have guessed that that's what the respective approaches would be. But the problem is, the Gra agrees to Rabbi Elimelech of Lezhansk. The Gra on Mishle himself writes on the Pasuk, Hachazik Bamusar, Al Teref. Grab a hold of Musar, do not slacken off. Why? Nitzareha, guard it, preserve it. Kihi chayecha, look at this. Kima sheha adam chay hu kidei leshaber ma shaloi shaber adhena. Man's life, what is life? To break your nature. Some people are very shy, they can never read a shidduch. But, but, but maybe they're going to say no, or maybe they're not going to pick up the phone, or maybe they're going to, I don't know what. So, 
Your job in life is to overcome your fears, overcome your anxieties. Whatever you have a difficult time doing, break it! Do the right thing! Says the Gra, that's the purpose of life. Says Ramach of Lejans, that's the purpose of life. So it seems like somewhat of a contradiction. On the one hand, the Gra says, you have a basic tendency. You're, not, you're gonna spill blood. You're gonna spill blood. So you might as well become a male. Why doesn't the Gra say, you're gonna spill blood? Well, overcome that. Overcome that. And, and, and so white tablecloths. Gra doesn't say that. So why is he saying the purpose of, of life is to break your nature? I don't think so. Probably mess up the kid. <laughs> Keep on breaking, just break. Says the Shvile Pinchas, it's not a stira. Okay, and you could think about this more. I'm not saying this is the definitive answer. He says, number 20, of course a person has to break whatever negative character traits they have. If you have a ne- negative character trait, if you're an angry person, a lazy person, you're too shy, you're too aggressive, you've got to break that. You're too arrogant, you're too desirous, you've got to break that. But the question is, in your general path of Avodah Sashem, should I... Should I focus on Ion? Should I focus on Bekiyos? Should I focus on Tzitzis? Should I focus on Tefillin? Should I Davin for the Amud? Should I, should I, I don't know what. Everyone has their own ability. The answer is, you should identify what you enjoy and what you're good at, and that should be your general approach in Avodah Sashem. The Gemara tells us, in Masech Tavod Azar, Daf Yotes, Ki Im Betoiras Hashem Chevtsoy, Amar Rebbe, a person only learns Torah, what he enjoys learning. The Samar Rebbe would say that he never forgot anything in learning in his life except for one thing. Except he cannot remember what his Bar Mitzvah Pshatah was about. Why? Because he was forced to learn it. So he doesn't like it. But something that you choose to learn on your own, something that you're interested in on your own, is much more enjoyable. And the Gemara goes on to record a story about Reb Shimon Berebi was sitting before Rebbe and there was a question what they should learn next. Uh, Levi said, let's learn Mishle. Reb Shimon says, let's learn Tehillim. And Levi forced him and he brought out a Tehillim. And then they got to the Paso, Ki im Hashem Chevtsoi. Rebbe stopped. He said, no. A person can only learn what they want to learn. So it's interesting, Rav Pinchas uh, Friedman points out, on the one hand, Rish Lakish says, Divrei Torah will only be miskayim. It's Gemara Bracha Samach Gimel Abbez. If somebody kills themselves over the learning, only someone who mamish kills themselves over the learning will be successful in the learning. On the other hand, now this is very interesting. You ready for this? The Pasuk says in Kohelas, look at number 24. Smach bachur bi'aldu secha. Rejoice, O youth, in your youth. Vitivcha libcha bimei b'chur secha. Enjoy, make your heart glad in your young age. Does that sound like the Yitzhar Toiv talking or the Yitzhar Hara talking? Right? It says, Rejoice in your youth. Be happy in, in your young age. Follow the path of your heart. Go after your eyes. You should know, You'll be punished for all this. So first it says, basically, go ch- whatever you check, go check out the world and, and go after it. And then it says, But you should know, you're going to get punished for it. So the Gemara says that the first part of the Pasuk is the Yitzhahara talking. Be happy in your, you know, rejoice in your youth, that's the Yitzhahara. You're going to be punished for it, that's the Yitzhah Taiv. But Reish Lakish says, no. The first part of the Pasuk is talking about Talmud Torah. Smach bachar b'yal secha, rejoice young man in your youth in learning Torah. Vitivcha libcha b'mei secha, glad in your heart in, the, in your younger years, 
That's referring to the very Torah. Vahalech bedarche libcha. Follow the path of your heart. That's referring to Divrei Torah. Says the Netziv. This Pasuk is talking about Divrei Torah. Why does it say, Vahalech bedarche libcha? Follow the way of your heart. That sounds like, you know, just go after your heart. Says the Netziv. Lefi she'ein hiluch avoidas Hashem betmido shel kol b'nei adam shoven. The general paths of avoidas Hashem will not be the same by two people. Some people are going to be more into davening. Some people are going to daven longer Shemayna Esrei's, more focus, more emotion. Other people are going to be more into Limanat Torah. Other people are going to be more into Chesed. Other people are going to be more into Shmir's Haloshan. And that's okay. Like the Gemara says, your father, what was he more careful in? Because discretion is given, everyone has a unique personality, and one should allow their personality to guide them. Again, you can't be lenient, you can't be... You can't say, well, I, I don't, that's not so important, or that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be not so careful about. You have to be careful about everything. But the question is, you know, what's going to be your pet mitzvah? You should follow your tendency and your personality. But says the Natsiv, not only in mitzvahs, in Talmud Torah as well. Ain called derech limud shavan. Not everyone's going to learn the same. Shall I learn Iyun? Shall I learn Bekiyus? Shall I learn Halacha? Yeah, you should learn all of that. But what should you focus on? Like we spoke about uh, Shavuos time. You know, there's a general healthy diet. You know, you got to learn Musar. You got to learn Mishnah, Gemara, Chumash, Rashi, Tanakh. But in terms of your main learning, a person has a certain discretion of what they enjoy learning. And it's interesting, if you look in number 27, the Shevet Musa, we spoke about this at length, Shavuos time, there's an idea that if you have a desire, it's interesting, he says something somewhat contradictory. If you like a certain type of learning, you like Agadita, you like Halacha, you like Lamdas, you like mysticism, you like Machshava, then that's a good sign, even though you need to learn all of the above, that you were sent down to this world to learn that. And it's okay. You know, I remember in, in Yeshiva there was somebody who was learning the sugya of Cheskas Karka for like 20 something years. It's like one blada Gemara. I don't know. His, you know, he came down in this Gilgal to learn that sugya. So a person's a, a, allowed to say, that this interests me, this excites me, this captivates me. Maybe I missed that you know, last time around. I'm here this time around. To learn. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have to learn Chumash, I don't have to learn Mishnah, I don't have to learn Gemara. I'm just going to learn that. No, you need a healthy diet. But in terms of focus, you could utilize your, your interest as a barometer and a guideline of, of what to focus on. But it's interesting, he also says that if you find yourself very weak in a particular mitzvah. That's also a barometer. You were sent down in this world to focus on that mitzvah. So if some people say, you know, look, I love davening, and I love chesed, but I'm not so into gemara. I'm not so into learning. Huh? Maybe you were sent down into this world to do that. Or, I love all mitzvah, it's just, you know, I have a hard time uh, with davening, or I have a hard time with chesed. That's also a barometer. So in a way, it's conflicting. You know? In a way, what you enjoy is a barometer. In a way, what you're having a hard time is a barometer. Which might be another approach to what the Gura is saying. What should you focus on? What's easy to me? But you're also created in this world to break what's hard for you. You know? It's like... Uh, and and uh, by the way, the following is really... Oya and Venaira. Even in somebody choosing a career and a job. So if you're trying, you know, you want, for chinuch, you're trying to guide. By the way, in, in terms of chinuch, you can have a masifta boy, you can have a high school boy or a boy. He's interested in halacha more than lamdus. No, you have to learn the lamdus because, you know, maybe at that age he has to give it a shot. But you have to let him express his personal interest in learning. If you break it, you're 
you're doing irreparable damage to your child. I understand there's a mahalach and there's a mesoira, but on the other hand, there's also a child here. There's also a human being here. And that human being needs cultivation, not coercion. This is really an amazing application of what we're learning. The Chavis Havavis writes that we know we have bitacha and HaKadosh Baruch is going to give us parnasa. Whether we work or not, Hashem is still going to give us parnasa. But we have to do Ishtadlos. What career should I embark upon as my Ishtadlos to make a parnasa? Chavis Havavis says the same way a lion has, is a carnivore. Right? A lion doesn't say, um, I would like some spinach and some uh, arugula in my salad. They're not, he's not going to, you know, taking, getting the salad mate with a nice dressing on his salad. The lion, there's a reason why God made the lion with big teeth. God gave the lion big teeth to eat meat. And the seagull, I was walking in the park the other day, the seagull has this long beak, and I was watching, the water was getting very agitated when the seagulls were going low. Why? Because the seagull pecks into the water, picks up a fish, a huge fish, flies out. So the seagull knows that the reason it has this long beat is to eat the fish. The seagull is not going to go you know, eating uh, other things. So that means everything in the animal kingdom has specific tools God created each animal with the tools to get their parnasa in the way with, with the tools that God created them. So Hashem gave certain birds tools to eat a certain way and to eat certain food. So too every human being should say, my talent and my ability and my capabilities are the tools God gave me. And therefore if God gave me these tools... This is the career that Hashem groomed me for. So in other words, if you want to know what career should I embark on, a person should understand their ability and their tools and say, well, just like a lion knows what it needs to eat and an alligator knows what it needs to eat, alligators don't eat um, worms. They don't eat little tiny things. Alligators eat geshmaka sudais, right? Because they have... They have the tools. So you have to identify what are my tools, what are my abilities, and then say, if Hashem gave me that ability, then Hashem wants me to use that. And actually this is a very um, meaningful and satisfying approach to life in general. Recognizing that Hashem wants us to identify what our personal ability is, and whether it's in Torah and mitzvahs, whether it's in even uh, choosing a livelihood, utilize that ability and capability to uh, make a living in that way. Just, um, it's interesting, the Rav Meir Shapiro, at one point in his life, was unsure. He was in Yeshiva Chachmei Lublin, and apparently he was being summoned to take some kind of government position, maybe in the parliament, because he was a member of the Polish parliament also. So he wrote a letter to his rabbi. He didn't know whether he should leave the yeshiva a little bit because he was very successful in learning and in teaching Talmidim. And on the other hand, he was a very uh, an eminent speaker. And he, did, he didn't know, you know how to guide himself in life. And the chart cover basically said that you're very talented in Limara Torah and in uh, developing Chidushim and Hashem gave you the tools for that and he writes that to a person's mission is very a beautiful language to udas ha'adam al man's mission in this world you know what God wants of you? you could recognize what Hashem wants of you from the ability He gave you in other words if you want to know what does God want from me? You need to look at you, and from understanding you, you can know what God wants from you. And in a certain sense, the education system sometimes doesn't allow us
to see that in our children or to see it in ourselves. You know, there's a certain system and do this now and do that then. And do we have a minion, by the way? Yes. Do we have six people who didn't have in? Well. Okay. Um, but basically, before we could do this and do that, we have to identify what we're able to do, what our talents are, what our abilities are. And the answer to what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from all of us can only, the answer can only be found in us. The answer what Hashem wants from a person can only be found within the person. And it's the job of a parent to be able to identify what the child's ability is to help the child answer that question. Says Rabbi Pinchas Friedman, this is all alluded to in the opening Pasuk in this week's parasha. V'yikhu li teruma. You should take for me, Rashi says, li lishmi. Meaning everybody has an obligation to take truma. Truma means to give from their koyach and their talent to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to serve Hashem. And if you want to know well, how should I serve Hashem? I know the Yikhuli Chuma. I know I have to give to Hashem. But how am I supposed to know how to give to Hashem? What path to take to give to Hashem? The answer is Me'is Kol Ish Asher Yedvenu Libai. You know how you know what, what you should give to Hashem? What you have an inclination for, what you have an interest in, what you have a love for, that is what God wants from you. That's how He created you. Now, as mentioned, there's certain things we're going to all be weak in. And that simultaneously we have to overcome those faults and those tendencies. And it doesn't mean, well, you know, I love to give tzedakah. The fact that I'm arrogant, well, you know, <laughs> well, everyone else will have to deal with that. But I love to give tzedakah. So here is the tzedakah. No. You love to give tzedakah, you should continue to give tzedakah. And... You got to also, like the Tzeto Kadon says, work on your gaiva, work on your kas, work on your taiva. So it's a, sort of a dual road. You take the general road of your interests and simultaneously do what it takes to overcome your, uh, your teva in areas that are uh, not in sync with the Torah. Thank you very much, everybody. I wish you all a freil chen adar. And next week we'll have to do our special Purim share, maybe the Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz. 2023 edition. Have a wonderful evening. Bracha v'atzlacha. Kol tov. Yeah, do we have a uh, six mitzvahim? You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.